Amelia, where are you? Is that an animal in the suitcase? Amelia. Amelia. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? Okay. Is that how you're going to Kabul? Kabul, Kabul, Kabul. Yeah, everyone's seen those beautiful pictures online. Seen those beautiful rock formations, especially off the arch. Well, stay tuned for some inside tips of what to expect when going to and, you know, pretty much arriving in Kabul. What do you expect? What do you expect to see? What do you expect to go through? You know, let's see what's going on in Kabul. So you want to go to Kabul? Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's go to Cabo. Well, where do I start? Let's see. First and foremost, if you are going to Kabul, my first advice is try your very best not to get a layover in Mexico City. Not to knock Mexico City's main airport, but that airport is huge and it can be very confusing and very frustrating. Why? For starters, although huge, it is seriously overcrowded. When you land there, you will not know your next gate for your transfer until about, say, 10 to 15 minutes before boarding. That's kind of ridiculous. In that case, you could find yourself even 20 minutes or more away from the gate. And by the time you get there, some people are already boarded. Or if you get there on time, it's so crowded that you have nowhere to sit. The gates, however, are, you know, they're incredibly close, but it's a big airport and people from a variety of other flights are sitting by your boarding lounge waiting for their flight to get ready. And, you know, they're all stuffed together like sardines, people sitting on the floor, leaning against the wall, all over just to get somewhere comfortable to wait on their flights. The next issue for some is that the temperature can vary drastically in that airport to be efficient the airport does not have air conditioning on all parts hear that again not every section of this airport has air conditioning okay um i say that because nowhere that we went there were air conditioning i'll cue this video right now for you to see how the building is it's designed as you can see to allow the flow of natural air um, to go through depending on the time of year. That natural air can be a hit or a miss in my opinion. So it can be as cold or colder than outside or almost as humid as outside. The exterior walls are designed for airflow as you see in the video and you know that can be comfortable and it can be very uncomfortable so you don't know what you're gonna get. So if you're getting a layover or getting a transfer try your best to get a transfer in the US that flies straight to Cabo afterwards. We were coming from Miami and there were no straight flights. Our friends took their layovers in the States and their experience, unlike ours, was a total breeze. They, they had no issues at all. Arrival, as you can see in this video, not every flight or airline uses the bridges, the jetways the, that, that connect to the airplane from the, um, the building structure. We were there to meet up with two other families and they got the bridge and you know, we use the stairs to enter and exit plane. It may be the fact that our flight from Mexico became a domestic flight and our friends were still on an international flight. So we got outside immediately and didn't need immigration and custom services anymore. You know much unlike they did because all that already happened when we landed in Mexico City 
nevertheless that is my personal preference so i have no complaint really i love that old school approach to be beside the planes and walking on a tarmac i just love that probably love smelling that jet fuel and hearing that engine rumbling in my eardrums about to tear it apart yeah i just love that kind of stuff so for those that hate the cold or the heat after a comfortable flight this is a hit or miss you might not like that or you might love it aeromexico for us definitely had us use the stairs as you can see but hey i loved it entering the airport when you enter the airport because this is such a huge tourist site you will be bombarded by people offering something tours rental cars taxis you name it because of the layout of Cabo and us liking the freedom to explore certain aspects of a destination safely of course we opted to rent. This may not apply to most people because you know a lot of tourists might just be taking the shuttle to their hotels. However, for anyone deciding to rent, this is where you have to pay attention. Your ride is here, Amelia. Here it is. Oh, over there. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna go get a rental car. We rented a Europe car. So let's see how that works out. So when you rent with Europe car, you meet Maria outside. Hello, amigo. <laughs> Welcome to Los Cabos. Pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. If you reserve and paid for a rental car on say one of those online travel agencies like Expedia, Travelocity, etc. The price you paid will not be the price you receive when you go to collect your car. Okay? I'm gonna queue up the price differences so you can see what I'm talking about. Check it out. There are other fees that are mandatory and no way around them. While waiting for a car, this was a little disappointing and frustrating because there are these are huge additional fees that are even more than the original that you paid for your car. Just waiting in a rental car area, there were three other tourists in our situation that were very upset and you know complaining about these unexpected fees. So please do yourself a favor all those rental car counters that you are walking by when you just um, arrived in the airport if you have a minute please stop by and see if you could get a better rate and i should add that it's not just us um this happened to the other um two couples that were there as well they both um rented cars and then whatever they paid online that's not what they end up paying when they got to um the terminal to collect um yeah that was four days for us at 358 plus 80 yeah that's a lot of money that's not what i anticipated to pay what is that 438 bucks yeah that's not what i wanted to pay but hey i need to just get out get to the hotel get something to eat get the baby changed and get everybody to relax start enjoying ourselves i wasn't gonna let it ruin my vacation we live and we learn move on <laughs> So check your cancellation policy and rules and act accordingly. Also, the rental car counter for your car, like I said, it's not in the airport. And we got to it via a shuttle, although it's just literally across the street. Like if you could walk, it would be less than three minutes. Now, where to stay in Cabo? If you want loads of activities and fun, like we do, I suggest staying closer to the downtown area. Um, the marina area, which you might Google and see as a popular destination, that's considered the downtown area. These areas are closer to the swimmable beaches and close to all the tourist attractions that you may want and need. I say swimmable beaches because a lot of the beaches in Cabo, you really can't swim there. You're not even allowed to swim there because the currents are so dangerous and the waves are out of this world. So you may want to see things like, you know, the Arch and Madano Beach, and this area is your best option. The marina area is pretty awesome, honestly, and this is really the downtown area. It's nice to walk, dine, 
party, get tours, souvenirs, etc. Everything you can think of as a tourist in Mexico, Cabo specifically, is in this area. So you might want to stay within, you know, shuttle distance of this area if you go to Cabo. And one more tip. Everywhere in Cabo accepts US dollars. So they do because it's very convenient and let's hustle for everyone.